I'm done. I'm done dual booting Windows. Which is why I've nuked my Windows 11 install, formatted literally everything in my PC and did it the right way. Going full Linux, baby. Let's talk about it. Right after you hit that like and subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video where we are going to talk about on why I decided to get rid of Windows entirely, what distribution I went with and of course, why. Let's start off with well, why was I dual booting in the first place? And the reason for that is actually quite simple. I like playing Destiny 2, but also Valorant sometimes. Both of these games are not supported on Linux. One because of an intrusive anti-cheat with kernel level access and one because… well, just because I guess. Simply said, virtualization or running these games through compatibility layers like Proton is not supported and even if you manage to get them running, there's a good chance that you might get banned. So what changed now? Well, there were always a few things that bothered me about dual booting. Like when you want to play a game and then get back to work again. Sure, restarting your PC nowadays does not even take up a minute, but it just feels like an unnecessary hassle, you know? Another thing that had an impact on my decision was, well, the timing. You know, I can live without playing Valorant. It's a fun game, don't get me wrong. But since I don't really play it anymore, it almost seems like, yeah. I won't miss it for a while. Destiny 2 also does not have new content right now. And if I really, really want to play it, there's always the option for cloud gaming. Even though I hate this trend and I don't really want to support it unless I really have to. And yeah, that's about it. And I think you see now what I meant by I don't really use Windows anymore. And dual booting also had its issues as well. For example, as I said before, I don't really like restarting my PC. So, if I wanted to play a game that works on both platforms, I loaded it up from a shared NTFS hard drive. Works great most of the time, except if you have automatic updates enabled. Both Linux and Windows use different libraries. And depending on the download status, like if you were in the middle of a patch download on one specific platform and you restarted your PC into a different operating system, it can break the game and you have to re-download it as a whole. And for other things that are not compatible on Linux, I don't really miss any software. The only thing in my setup that maybe needs some configuration is my G303 Shroud Edition. But this mouse has an onboard storage. And if I really need to change some settings, programs like Solar are also getting the job done. But why Linux over Windows? Well, for one, you get better privacy. And second, I just like it more. It feels fresh. Kind of reminds me of the good old times when I got into PCs. So that was why I made the decision to nuke Windows entirely. But what Linux distribution did I replace it with? As most of you probably know, I've been using Fedora 36 for more than three months now. And I was quite happy with it. But whenever you're doing a complete overhaul of your PC, you do a bit more research and planning on what you currently need and what you might need in the near future. And I only really have just a few requirements for an operating system. I like default experiences, as in default desktop environments, without having to clear out custom extensions, plugins or config files. Second, I also want to game on my PC. But since it is also a workstation, I prefer a bit more stability over complete bleeding edge. And finally, there should be a big community behind it since this can help when debugging a distro specific problem. Not saying that I've ever encountered any, but you never know, right? Now, of course, because of the bleeding edge approach of Arch and most of its derivatives, dependencies are more likely to break than on the exact opposite, like Debian. Sure, for gaming, it might be the best choice, but as a workstation with a bit more sensitive data, eh, not so much. Personally, I like Debian-based distributions the most, since Debian is the distribution I have the most experience on. I've worked with Debian servers before, I really like Apt, and unlike Fedora, media codecs and GPU dependencies like CUDA for NVIDIA are either already installed or easy to get. That being said though, I've said it in older videos before, but I want to use something that I would recommend. And this also includes newcomers. And even though I really want to build my own custom private Linux distribution or experience, it isn't something that I want to install simply because I want to recommend it to everyone. So Debian itself is not really a great candidate for that. But what about its derivatives? Meet the distributions that fulfill most of my requirements. 
First is Upantu, and it's a great distro. What I personally don't like about it is the non-vanilla GNOME experience, at least if you choose the default desktop environment. Now, to be clear, that is not a bad thing though. On the contrary, I think it is great when a distro has their own spins of several desktop environments, but my personal choice is vanilla without the need of deleting settings, extensions and so on. Ubuntu is a really great choice if you don't care about that. Pop OS is another great example of this. I've used it before and it's a very good operating system, but it's just not perfect for me. Linux Mint looks promising, but I don't like their desktop environment spins. Again. Really great usability, but more of a hassle to get something like GNOME on it, especially when recommending it to a newcomer. If you like Linux Mint, then go for it. It's a solid choice. And sure, there are many different other distributions like Sorin OS, but again, vanilla. Now, some of you might already be typing vanilla Arch, but it's bleeding edge. But wait, what about Manjaro? An Arch-based distro which aims towards a more stable approach. Well, I'm getting a slap for this one. I don't like Pac-Man and Pamek. Both solutions are not necessarily bad, but they are different. Maybe too different. Sure, if you don't mind that, then Mancharo is one of the best Arch-based distributions that you can go with. And not gonna lie, most users out there will have a great and solid experience with it. But for me, personally, not so much. All right, let's take a look at something new and that actually fits my personal needs. Meet the Nobara project. Nobara is a Fedora-based distribution developed by Glorious Agro, who already provides a custom Proton version which is mostly superior to Valve's official releases. And the same is done to Fedora by developing a new distribution which includes tons of performance improvements but also slight differences like better driver support and a better install and go experience. And to be honest, if you are a gamer and just use your PC for watching YouTube videos, Netflix or something like that, then Nobara would be my absolute recommendation for you. However, I chose to go back to Fedora 36, simply because Nobara is still in active development. Even though Glorious Agrol is known to provide solid experiences, I simply don't want to take any chances. I've done a whole video about Fedora 36, so maybe you want to check that out. But yeah, there are some downsides of using Fedora, like the absence of media codecs by default. But unlike other distributions, the installation process of the notorious NVIDIA driver is simple and Secure Boot is also working just like that. And yeah, Secure Boot actually has some really good advantages if used correctly. Yeah, Microsoft, what are you doing? Fedora 36 is in my opinion still one of the best Linux distributions simply because you have Red Hat as a company behind it. That means it has tons of native packages, a big community and for me personally a native desktop environment experience while also being extremely stable. But why is that so important for me anyway? Well for starters I like to give feedback on a basic level even if it sometimes sounds a bit harsh. But the thing is it's the base of many different desktop environments and this is where most should happen in my opinion. But what I also like about default desktop experience is a blank canvas. You can build your own custom experience without going through deletion processes or worries that you might break something. And this is very important for recommending it to newcomers who also want to customize their system in the future. Now to be clear, Every single distribution I've mentioned today is a good one. And you will be probably happy with all of them. But my pick definitely goes to Fedora 36 and it just works for me. That is until you want to install DaVinci Resolve, but that's another topic. So in conclusion on why I don't need Windows anymore, everything just works on Linux. My audio interface? Sure. Mouse configuration? Why not? Gaming? Well, I already streamed Ori and the Blind Forest over on my second channel. Swing by sometime. The point is that besides some game compatibility issues, everything else just works. And I can happily say that I've reclaimed ownership over my PC and that's where I'll leave it. So if you've liked this video, then make sure to show it with a like and heck, even subscribe if you want to know more about the advantages of using Linux. I also believe that this video might be interesting for you. So go ahead and click it. And all that's left to say now is good morning, 
Good afternoon or good evening wherever you are. I'll see you around.